G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. This one we're going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of fiber channel. Now this has come around uh, thanks to Tenex Optics who wants an absolute pile of information on fiber channel. But this one I want to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of fiber channel over standard ethernet that we have right at this point in time. And we're going to include FCOE in this, in this video as well, fiber channel over ethernet. All right, now, at this point in time, we have pretty much two standard uh, ethernet speeds and multiple standard fiber channel speeds available to the general population currently. Now, I use general population because anyone can get it, assuming you can afford it. We have a pretty much bog standard, ever reliable one gig ethernet, which we've had for a long time. Um, pretty much the standard everywhere. We're starting to see the advent of 10 gigabit Ethernet. However, we've had faster fiber channel speeds for some time, as I said in a previous video. Okay, so let's look at the advantages of fiber channel. Whopping great speeds. It's fairly synchronous. You can have it over much longer distances than that of Ethernet without having to put boosters and switches in. Um, it's very quick. You don't have to worry about electromagnetic interferences if the cables are shielded correctly. You can link two offices together and both offices will feel like they're part of one office. You can have voice and data going down there with no degradation in signal strength, bandwidth availability, or anything like that. However, the disadvantage to fibre is this. Fibre channel's not cheap. It is getting cheaper, but it's still nowhere near as cheap as, say, that of Ethernet. Now, with 10 gigabit Ethernet, depending on your cable length, I think you're out at about 80 metres, uh, depending on which cap cable you get. Ideally, 10 gigabit, I think, gets its maximum performance at about 50 metres. 10 gigabit is marginally, or 10 gigabit Ethernet is marginally cheaper than that of fibre channel. However, the kicker to all this is FCOE, or fibre channel over Ethernet. Now, with this, you can get fibre channel speeds over Ethernet cabling, meaning you can get four gigabit of a standard CAT6, CAT7 lead using the correct converters. In some cases, FCOE does use what looks like to be a very similar interface to Mini DB9. Electrically, you get fiber channel speed, but you're using copper cables to access that speed. FCOE is slightly more expensive than standard Ethernet and cheaper than fibre. The biggest problem with fibre you get is the cost of the cable. Now, depending on the quality of the cable, how thick the cable is, how many actual fibres are in the cable, you may have a multi-core fibre cable, which has got multiple offshoots. Glass is the biggest problem. Also, the purity of glass. You want the glass in that fiber channel to be nearly near enough damn it to 100% crystal, crystal clear. You want it perfect. Now, initially, fiber channel was very expensive. The biggest drawback to fiber these days is laying it. Especially if you want to run dark fiber. It's not cheap. Once you've got it, it pays for itself really quickly. The problem with fibre is it is short-term pain for long-term gain. Now, let's look at fibre channel versus Ethernet. First off, huge jump in speeds compared to standard copper. We're not there yet. We've got 10 gigabit Ethernet. We've got 128 gig fibre. It's been out for a couple of years now. Okay, so do you need to run fibre in your home, 
bit of overkill. If you can, yeah, sure, but it won't do you any good if you're not moving gigs of files all over your network. It's expensive for a home network. Very, very expensive. Now, in the case of 10X Optics, he's looking at creating his own data center, as we all know. Now, my advice would be, if you're going to do this for yourselves, you'd be better off doing FCOE, but he wants to run full FC. Not FCOE. Full-blown AB fiber. Okay? Pass-throughs, transceivers, transponders, LC, the whole lot. FCOE's been around for a while too, but it's not as, uh, well, it is widely used, but it's in specific areas. Like TV stations often use FCOE for video uh, systems, um, such as the uh, PFC 500s that we had a look at uh, last year, actually. They are FCOE. Comes out what looks like a DB9 plug and goes into a card that looks like an Ethernet card. It's not, but it looks very similar to it. That is FCOE. Basically using copper to run two to four gig speeds. Often you find that uh, FCOE, as I said, can look like a DB, mini DB9. It can even look like a DB9 plug, but only have, instead of having nine pins, four pins. But that, that's all you get. Okay. Now, when you're running uh, FCOE, you are getting, uh, currently, you, I think, and I'm, I'm, I'm unsure about this, um, so don't, don't back this one in. Um... I think FCOE's maximum throughput at the moment, I think it may be 128 gig, but I think it's actually sitting at 16 gig. So six gig faster than the standard ethernet that we've got at the moment. Although, the, still the standard ethernet availability is the one gig ethernet that we all have been using for some time. So for bang for buck purposes, fiber channel versus ordinary run of mill ethernet. Well, at least the upside of fiber channel Sheer speed. But you pay for it. Especially once you start getting into that 10, 16, 32, 128 gig. You start to pay big bickies. Also, the other drawback is the fibre channel leads can be, not always, can be rather pricey in comparison to a standard Cat 5, 6 or 7 lead. Um, again, in the same vein as, as uh, Ethernet leads, the longer the lead, the more expensive it is. So, why do I not run fibre channel here when I have got a stack load of Sun fibre cards? Simple. I find that, personally, I get the best performance for my network and my needs off ordinary Ethernet. Don't need anything else. If I had the money to buy a buttload of fibre channel stuff, would I run fibre? I could run fibre into here, yes. I could use SFP links to do it. Would that help between the switches? Yes, it would help between the two Ethernet managed switches I have running here. But that's it. I haven't got anything SFP connected. If I did, yes, it would improve my, my bandwidth throughput, especially with access to my servers. But in actual fact, I'm quite happy on Ethernet. Don't have a problem with it. It does everything I need it to do. Now, when you think about it, technically I do run a small data center here because of the Sun equipment and the storage platforms I run. But I don't need, and when I say I don't need, at this stage, I don't need to run a full FC system here in my own home. Um, so that's that's essentially why. So fibre channel gives you better speeds, better stability, less interference due to EMF. Um, great for interlinking uh, storage subsystems. 
But as a networking platform, you pay for it. So you get advantages in sheer speed. It's not cheap. You get advantages in distance. But again, you have to weigh up the pricing of it all. Now, I can only talk about the pricing of Fibre Channel here in Australia. Okay? I don't know about the pricing anywhere else in the world. Um, Jimmy Acklaw might tell might be able to tell me how much it is in the UK. Obviously, my dear friend over in France, ES, Electro Scavenger, might be able to tell me how much fibre is in Europe. Here in Australia, it's not cheap. It's not cheap at all. It's actually very expensive. Some of my US viewers might be able to tell me how expensive it is in the US to, to run a fibre network as a LAN, including bits and pieces. Now, in the case of Tenex Optics, he, uh, he could be in for a real hit to the bank account. I mean a real hit to the bank account. But as I said, I can only talk from the noisy point of view of how much I know fibre can be here in Australia. I know the outlay that some businesses put into their fibre networks. You're talking tens of thousands of thousands of dollars in some cases. Maybe hundreds of thousands, especially for a large business wanting to run fibre. Um, and that's my worry with Tenix is the fact that his bank account could get absolutely scrubbed of all cash with this sort of setup that he's looking at doing, which we will mo move through as we as we move through the Everything Fibre playlist. So there is uh, Fibre Channel and Ethernet advantages and disadvantages. Admittedly, as I said, with Fibre, you have the advantage of massive distances in comparison to that of standard Ethernet. <clears throat> um, especially if you're a large business in a multi-level building. The upside to fibre is, is that you're not having to put network switches and booster switches every 90 odd metres. You can have one switch centrally located with every bit of fibre running everywhere. But here in Australia, that is big dollars. And like I said, I'm not sure, I'm sure Jimmy Ackler or Paul Turner or someone will tell me how much it is to set up fibre networking in the UK. ES, my dear friend, will tell me how much it is to set it up in Europe. Um, and my worry is I'm not sure Tennis quite understands how much it's going to cost him because I've got a horrible feeling, and this is only based on my knowledge of fibre here in Australia, that he may end up draining out his bank account entirely. There's Fibre Channel versus Ethernet. Stick around, more fibre stuff coming up very soon. Until then, we shall catch you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.